Nigel Pack is only six feet tall, not exactly the frame that'll get national pundits or NBA scouts talking. But what he's done for college basketball is outsized. Because of the transfer portal and name, image, and likeness benefits, Pack was able to leave Kansas State and play for the University of Miami. If the headlines generated weren't big enough, that ensuing season, the Hurricanes made a run to the Final Four, with Pack averaging 13.5 points per contest thanks to his exceptional shooting. So much for being diminutive. Today's game is impacted by the portal and NILs, but is it to the point where it should impact how we fill out our bracket? Let's explore. Welcome to our Bracket Wisdom series on the Football Analytics Show podcast. I'm Edward Egross on assignment for the Power Rank. First, it might be helpful to go over the latest rules for how a player can go elsewhere and what they could stand to make. Before, the transfer portal lasted 60 days, but this year, it's just 45, opening after Selection Sunday. Only then can they contact other schools and transfer whenever they want. The portal actually predates another rule in 2021, where a student-athlete can go to another school and play right away, given they're eligible. If these things didn't change college sports enough, now student-athletes can profit off of their name, image, and likeness. The skeptic might say, now it's easy for a player to leave a program and go to a spot where the money is better. These criticisms swarmed point guard Tyrese Hunter, who left Iowa State to join Texas. He told reporters NIL opportunities had nothing to do with going to a bigger program with bigger wallets. Instead, he wanted to prepare himself for the NBA and develop his skills. His offensive rating has improved since moving to Austin, even though his usage rate went down since his freshman year in Ames. If chasing the highest bidder is the primary motivation for highly touted players, then Blue Bloods and programs with wealthy alumni should be dominating the sport. Texas, with Hunter, should have been competing for the Big 12 championship. Instead, their seed in the NCAA tournament is average. For every success story like Miami, there's also a Texas. NIL data are available to further enlighten us. On3 has put together a list of the top college basketball players in terms of NIL valuation, a proprietary number that's meant to project annual value by combining roster value and known NIL. Only a handful are transfers, and though a few have made more money switching schools, as we can explain another way, talent is not being consolidated to just a few programs. For this exercise, I returned to On3's website and looked at their team transfer portal rankings. As they put it, the index used to create the rankings uses their score to measure a team's production during the transfer process compared relative against its roster. Using just 2023 data, I then regressed this index onto Ken Palm's overall efficiency margin to see how much the transfer portal can explain a team's quality. The result a significant 4%, meaning 4% of a team's overall Ken Palm rating can be explained by their ratings from the transfer portal. And 4% isn't nothing. However, just to see if I could improve upon this 4%, I then filtered out all data with an index of zero to see if those who've either gained or lost a bunch of talent could explain more of Ken Palm's scores. Unfortunately, it did not. One reason for so much variance is many transfers are not chasing the next check. They're chasing playing time and development. Brandon Pajemski went from Illinois to Santa Clara and wound up as a first-round NBA draft pick. This season, Tyon Grant Foster bounced around Kansas and DePaul before landing at Grand Canyon. It's hard not to root for this young man after he suffered cardiac arrest just a couple of years ago and had to have his heart shocked back into rhythm three times. But he is now in the tournament. McNeese is also in the big dance because of transfer Shahade Wells, who previously played at TCU. Some of these smaller schools wound up with a top ranking in their conference from, say, 24-7 sports, while others were able to turn relative unknowns into elite players. Keep in mind for this exercise, only one year of data were used. Transfers from previous years can have major impacts after some time. 
One example is Janai Broom of Auburn, who's increased his scoring load this season and has helped lead the Tigers to the SEC Tournament Championship, completely surpassing expectations from a season ago. A handful of programs do emphasize transfers, perhaps the most notable being Gonzaga. Head coach Mark Few has prioritized player development, then turns to transfers to fill in the gaps like Dan Dickow and Brandon Clark. In an interview with The Athletic, Few said it's about fit and roster construction more than it is going after the most talented guys. It's why the recruiting rankings aren't usually strong, and what few yearly transfer rankings we have aren't at the top either. But there's no denying the overall health of the program. But again, Gonzaga is more of an outlier than the norm. Now that we've had our thorough discussion of the transfer portal, let's look at specific examples of transfers potentially making an impact this year and see how it should affect filling out our bracket. The highest-ranked transfer portal team in On 3's rankings is NC State, led by point guard DJ Horn, a graduate transfer who began his collegiate career at Illinois State, then went to Arizona State before joining the Wolfpack. He's averaging close to 17 points and more than two assists per game. Mohamed Diara, previously at Missouri, is a stretch big, averaging seven boards a contest. However, even though they clinched the ACC tournament title as a massive underdog, NC State is not favored against Texas Tech in the first round. 24-7 Sports has a different transfer portal class atop its rankings for 2023. It's Kansas, thanks to five-star center Hunter Dickinson. He is projected to be an NBA draft pick in part because he's a big who's still willing to shoot the three, nailing 35% of his attempts there. However, the former Michigan Wolverine is working through a dislocated shoulder. Add Kevin McCullers' injury to the mix, and the Jayhawks could be that much more unpredictable. Even if Dickinson is more than serviceable, the Power Ranks member numbers have KU with only a 28.5% probability of making the Sweet 16. It is worth noting, specifically, the member numbers use an algorithm that is more aggressive in moving teams on recent performance. Another reason Kansas could have trouble advancing is PATH. Who you play matters. And assuming there's no upset, the Jayhawks would face the aforementioned Gonzaga Bulldogs in the second round. While this season has not featured the fanfare of the last few years, Gonzaga has improved recently, including road victories at Kentucky and at St. Mary's. Former Creighton Blue Jay Ryan Nemhard is a scoring point guard, averaging nearly 13 points a game. And Graham E.K. left Wyoming to contribute 16.5 points and 7 rebounds a contest. Perhaps at times, transfers need extra time to gel. And if that's the case for Gonzaga, they may be poised for another March run. Finally, one more important point from Evan Miyakawa of EvanMia.com that's worth highlighting. A tweet of his from July that charted what percentage of points scored in all of college basketball came from transfers. In 2017, that percentage was just 11.3%. But every season since, it's grown to greater than 20% in 2020, to nearly 38% in 2022, to 43% last year. The projection was that transfers would account for roughly 50% of all scoring this season. The transfer portal does matter in college basketball, and it is worth your time looking up which programs have played well in recent weeks to see how that development is coming along. And transfers should only matter more in the future. You have been warned. Thank you for listening to this episode of Bracket Wisdom on the Football Analytics Show podcast. I'm Edward E. Gross. Friendly reminder, make sure to check out the Power Ranks March Madness cheat sheet that makes it drop dead easy to fill out your bracket. These predictions are based on analytics that have predicted the game winner in almost 70% of the last 15 tournaments. To get this cheat sheet, sign up for the free email newsletter at thepowerrank.com. That is Dr. Ed Fang's site for better March Madness predictions through analytics. Once again, that's thepowerrank.com. Members of the Power Rank get access to full bracket advice for how to win your pool. This includes the Power Rank's very best analytics, strategy, and insights into basketball. Members also get access to member predictions for each game and college basketball player props during the tournament. To learn more, go to thepowerrank.net. This is a URL that will take you to the page on the site dedicated to becoming a member of the Power Rank. Once again, that's thepowerrank.net. 
Net. It has been a blast working with Ed and David to put together this Bracket Wisdom series. I hope you enjoyed listening just as much as we enjoyed sharing our knowledge and insights. And as always, enjoy the games. Bracket Wisdom.